driving on a long road Rising with the morning sun It's a hunger that drives me Oh Lord, set my soul Take my pain and turn it into gold Cause all I know The big sky whammy right there. Everybody turn it. Everybody look. Where's the ball? But I'm telling you right now, you run this hard in life. No one is going to catch you. I so appreciate the time. I'm, I'm honored to be amongst all the other uh, letter winners and, uh, and go Orange. Thanks so much. To the fans, you guys are the greatest. Now more than ever, your success is in your hands, and I couldn't always say that for women. That officially makes us three Georgetown killers. I appreciate the love you've given me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roy Simmons Sr. and Jr. for all the opportunities and education, being a part of the community, the ability to play a sport we love, and now you are Iron Men. It's the biggest upset in the Carrier Dome in more than 30 years. Back to Yada, open three for the lead, got it! Welcome everyone to Goldstein Auditorium at CUSE Awards 12. To start our evening, please welcome Director of Athletics, John Wildhack. All right, good evening everybody. I want to uh, welcome our staff, our coaches, members of the Chancellor Senior Team who are here tonight, special guests. But the biggest welcome and my thank you is reserved for our amazing student athletes. Tonight's your night, and we celebrate your accomplishments, both academically and athletically, and we thank you for the way you represent our university, our department, and our community. Now, back when I was at ESPN, which wasn't all that long ago, one of my favorite things to do at night is I'd sneak into the highlight screening area, and I'd kind of try to see what were going to be the top 10 plays of the night. So off of that theme, let's start tonight by enjoying some of the great highlights of Syracuse Athletics over the past year. The invert curve. Stutter step. Switch it to the middle! And Bunbury with the game winner! The Orange find a way once again! Syracuse moving the ball again. Now a fake, one-on-one, -on -one. into the end zone, touchdown, Syracuse Ishmael! Longakaya stops and starts, gets it back, this for three in the lead, she's got it! Inside of a minute to play, Tiana Mungakaya with a three! Another shot for Syracuse, another save by Gilchrist. She's been very busy, but there's Lee Slockaway, finds the back of the net, opens up the scoring, Syracuse on the board.
Jimerson. Dish off to Levy. What a goal by Nicole Levy through the legs. Hard to see how she got this one off. I mean, and that's just another installment of it. The legend of Nicole Levy. Now, is that pretty cool or what? Yeah, pretty cool. Now, unbelievable moments in as memorable as those moments were, there was one highlight, there's one moment that transcended sports. It spoke to friendship, team, courage, and inspiration. That's a moment in time that none of us will ever forget, will remember for years and years to come now. Rex isn't here tonight. He's back home in Tampa, and he's courageously fighting his battle against cancer. But we're going to send a copy of tonight's show to Rex and his family. And what I'd like everyone to do is underneath your seat, there's one of these. I'd like us all to rise as one, and let's show our support and show our love for Rex, because tonight, we're all Rex strong. Thank you. Rex, our message to you from all of us is you have the full support of Orange Nation and you will win your fight. Now we've got a great show tonight. Enjoy it, celebrate your success and your accomplishments, and let me welcome our host for the evening and the voice of the orange, please welcome Matt Park. A shout out to the Culpepper family. They're a, a family of survivors, literally. His mother was on the TV show twice. Father was on it, played in the NFL and uh, Rex is a heck of a fighter in his own right. And welcome everybody. Spring has finally arrived here in Central New York and it is Cuse Awards 12. Everybody looks great. We hope you have a great time tonight. That's the most important thing. We are here to honor you for your achievements in the classroom, on the field, and in the community. Thank you for your work in representing the university and have you celebrate some of those excellent moments over the course of this year among your group. Late breaking news, shout out to the tennis team getting into the NCAA tournament with that, that announcement today. You'll hear from them plenty tonight after a breakout season. Want to call attention to my new friend here. This is a new trophy. We're calling it the Otto. Okay, Otto's in the house. Can anybody tell where the mascots are sitting? So we've got that going, you know the deal. We've got some of the team awards. We've got uh, various awards that uh, all the uh, athletes here were eligible for and uh, lots of fun and having some student presenters for those coming up in uh, just a bit. Social media, we invite you to engage throughout the night. I know it's always popular to take pictures over here on the perimeter of the room. Some of you have taken advantage of that. That'll be there and available for you and certainly the winners and you can chronicle the story with the hashtag Cuse Awards throughout the night. So one of the things we'll have as a running theme over the course of the night again this year is our Game of the Year nominees will be scattered throughout the evening. We'll have uh, periodic uh, submissions of the finalists. Let's check out the first of our eight finalists for Game of the Year. Football, 
On Friday the 13th in the Carrier Dome, the Orange upset the number two team in the country, the defending national champion Clemson Tigers. Eric Dungy threw three touchdown passes in Syracuse's highest ranked win since the upset of number one Nebraska in 1984. Taking down the defending national champions, pretty good case right there for game of the year, but that is just one of the eight contestants in that category. And traditionally, we get the evening started with our Rookie of the Year Award. And to present that, we welcome a pair of ice hockey players. Please say hello to Lindsay Eastwood and Kristen Stiermacheski. First award honors the new kid on the block. We all know how it feels to be fresh meat in a new environment. But when a young star steps up, we take notice. Our Rookie of the Year candidates demonstrate the diversity of our student body. This year's nominees come from seven states, as well as Russia, Latvia, Israel, and of course, our home and native land. That's right, our neck of the woods up north. Two of our nominees are from the same hometown in Canada. Here are the nominees for Female Rookie of the Year. Kate Donovan, soccer, second on the team in goals and third in points. Her first career two-goal game came against Cornell. Ella Sada, volleyball, on the ACC All-Freshman team, finished second on the team in digs and third in kills. Jessica DiGirolamo, ice hockey, Member of the CHA All-Rookie Team, finished third on the Orange in assists. Digna Stratmana, basketball. Voted to the ACC All-Freshman Team, finished third in the league in blocked shots. Sofia Golovskaya, tennis. An ACC Freshman of the Week, has won 10-plus singles and doubles matches this season. Gabby Turan, softball. The Orange starting second baseman leads the team in home runs. Sam Swart, lacrosse, third on the team in goals, named National Rookie of the Week after scoring four at Virginia. Amani Clark, track, ran an 11.44 second 100 meter dash, the second fastest in Syracuse history at the Miami Invitational. The auto for Female Rookie of the Year goes to Digna Stroutmana. Well, Kayla Alexander and Alexis Peterson previously won Athlete of the Year for Women's Basketball. Digna becomes the team's first player to win the Rookie of the Year Award. Thank you for my team. They're great, amazing, and for my coaches that work with me and gave me this opportunity. Thank you. And here are the nominees for Male Rookie of the Year. Tejan Buchanan, soccer. Third team all ACC and member of the all freshman team. Finished third on the orange in goals. Aaron Service, football. Started every game at center and led the orange in plays. On the field every snap in 10 of 12 games. O'Shea Brissett, basketball. Member of the ACC all freshman team. Finished fifth in the country in minutes played. Jameel Adams, track. Finished 17th at the ACC Indoor Championships at the 60-meter hurdles. Tucker Dordovic, lacrosse, scored four goals versus Virginia, the first true freshman to do so since Mike Lavelle in 2005. And the male rookie of the year goes to...
O'Shea Brissett. O'Shea, the fifth different men's basketball player to win the Rookie of the Year award. How about this group joining Johnny Flynn, Brandon Trish, Tyler Ennis, and Malachi Richardson. Oh, I was patient. Now I can scream that we made it. Now everywhere, everywhere I go, they say better. Uh, just want to say thank you to everyone here. Uh, shout out my squad over there. You know, I wouldn't uh, be able to do this without them, so I just want to say thank you, you guys. That's like out of Lindsay's closet. That's a Team USA, or Team Canada, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Fine jar, Where, let's, let's put a dollar in the fine jar for me. That's a Team Canada hockey jersey. You don't get to keep that, O'Shea. That's just for the pictures, representing our friends uh, north of the border. Okay, now it's time for, uh, we break up the Team Cuse Award winners into season. Uh, we'll hear from the winter and spring award winners in just a bit. One of the cool things about this is some of the other awards, you know, game of the year and that type of thing are self-explanatory, but as far as a team winner, it was up to each team. They could decide whether that was their MVP, their inspirational leader, their most improved, whatever that might have been and most important uh, with the coaching staff and the players on that team. We might even have an NFL draft choice in the house as we kick off our fall Q's Award winners. Zaire Franklin, football. The first three-time Orange captain in more than a century was named honorable mention All-ACC after an 85-tackle senior season. Erin Gillingham, field hockey, earned 11 starts in her senior season and scored the game-winning goal in a 1-0 win against number 16, Princeton. Courtney Brosnan, women's soccer. The senior captain named third-team All-ACC after leading the league in saves. She graduates with a program record for career saves, second in wins, and third in shutouts. Hendra Kilpert, men's soccer, started 18 games in goal for the Orange and made a career-high 60 saves. Named ACC Defensive Player of the Week after shutting out top-ranked Wake Forest. Bell Sand, volleyball, led the Orange in digs for the third straight season and finished her career third in program history with 1,620 digs. Paige Stoner, women's cross country, won the first ACC individual championship in program history and followed that up with a 17th place finish at the NCAA championships, the best ever for the Orange. Justin Knight, men's cross country, finished up a perfect fall by winning his second straight ACC championship and the first individual national championship in program history. This year's Fall Sport Cuse Award winners. And now let's welcome to the stage Deputy Athletics Director Kim Keating Kirkpatrick and the Coordinator of Student Athlete Engagement, Mark Trumbo. As you know, a big part of being a student athlete at Syracuse is representing the university in our local community. Whether it's signing an autograph, helping build a recreational trail at a local park, or reading to elementary school children, our student athletes are looked up as role models by those who get to see them do these great deeds. Let's check out some of the highlights from the work in the community this year. Each year, every Syracuse team participates in CUSE Cares, the athletic department's community service initiative. This past year, student athletes were involved in more than 2,500 hours of community service with numerous organizations throughout the area, including the Galasano Children's Hospital, Project Life Movement, Polar Plunge, Team Impact, Lift for Life, the National Down Syndrome Society, the Boys and Girls Club, and visits to many schools around Onondaga County. 
because Cuse cares about our community. And now the winner is women's rowing. Great job by Women's Rowing again. This is truly a team award, so we would actually like the whole team for Women's Rowing to make to the stage. I actually want to show you guys something new that happened this year. Matt Park is going to bring out a trophy. Uh, SAC launched something new this year called the Q's Cup. And the Q's Cup is designed to help student athletes reach their maximum potential. We devised a point system that recognizes commitment to Q's cares, academic success, athletic achievement, and S project participation. It was a spirited competition, and it was a close finish. The first Q's Cup also goes to women's rowing this year. Thank you to everyone in the Syracuse Athletics community for all the work that we put in and give back to Syracuse. So, thank you. It's a big part of our audience. We need them to get back into their seats here. Congratulations to uh, women's rowing, and we're off and running. How about now game number two in the nominees for our game of the year after eking out wins in the first four against Arizona State and then in the first round of March Madness against TCU. The Orange took it to a new level when taking on fifth-ranked Michigan State in the Spartans' backyard. Men's basketball. Syracuse upset third-seeded Michigan State to advance to the Sweet 16. The Orange held the Spartans to a season low in points. And in the final minute, Tyus Battles' late shot clock jumper and the Orange defense sealed the 55-53 win. Our next presenter has over a thousand career wins and not many that were more improbable than that one that was someday this spring. And not only is he a pillar in our community, he's a pillar of the CUSE Awards. Every time we ask this uh, next presenter whose uh, name you know, and many of you took pictures with him earlier tonight, he says yes, he shows up and has a lot of fun as a presenter. We'd like to welcome again, the Hall of Famer, Jim Behan. Thank you. When you're 73, you're happy to be invited anywhere. <laughs> and as the oldest coach here, and probably the oldest coach anywhere, come to think of it, I'm going to just say first that I'm so proud to be part of the coaching fraternity at this school. We have great coaches here, and I know that because every year I present this award, and I know when I'm presenting it that I'm obviously not getting it this year, or any other year probably, I've slipped down on the coaching ladder from, you know, fairly close to the top to closer to the bottom over these last few years. And I also do want to point out that by far the worst dressed team here tonight is the men's basketball team. I would, I would have them stand up, but I'd be too embarrassed. Although there's a guy sitting over there that I think we'd like to see come back here next year. How about Tyus Battle? Would we like to see him back here next year? I'm also proud to present this award tonight. The coaches of the year this year are Coach Eunice Lamam and Dave Reichman.
It's two first-time Cuse Award winners tonight and Dave Reichman of the men's rowing team and Eunice Lamont of the tennis team. Uh, just a couple quick thank yous. Uh, my staff, you guys are awesome. Thanks. Uh, the administration and last but not least, uh, my guys, I'd have you all come up here, but you'd probably break the stage or something. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. It's, uh, it's an honor to, to receive this award, especially uh, considering the, the caliber of the coaching staff that we have here at SU. Uh, I want to thank uh, our players. We've got uh, eight unbelievable uh, student athletes that put in a lot of work and a lot of commitment, and they trust the process. So it's been, uh, it's been an honor uh, coaching you. And uh, last but not least, uh, I want to thank our coaching staff. Uh, this is uh, an award that uh, we share. Uh, our uh, associate head coach, Shelly George. You're, uh, you're the backbone of our team, so thank you. Uh, I want to thank our uh, strength and conditioning coach, Coach Hicks. Thank you so much. And uh, our uh, volunteer uh, coach, Coach uh, Len Lopo, who's not with us tonight. Thank you so much. And now let's check out our third nominee for Game of the Year. Men's Lacrosse. The Orange won in Durham for the first time since 1938, scoring four goals in the last five minutes to rally from two down. After beating the Blue Devils in overtime last year, Jamie Tromboli scored the final goal with 1.14 left in the 15-14 win. Okay, and uh, as we continue to roll along here, everybody having a good time? Okay, more to come. You know, I don't need to tell the people in this room, but uh, now as much as ever is a dynamic, impactful time to be a college student athlete. And here on our campus in 1970, a group of football players who became known as the Syracuse Eight stood up for their beliefs, risking their standing on the team at the time for the improvement of conditions for all. The Syracuse 8 Courage Award is given annually to a person in our university community who demonstrates the character of that group. We are again pleased to bring back a member of the Syracuse 8 to present the award. He was an orange defensive lineman back in the late 60s and 70s and has gone on to be a very successful businessman in Connecticut. Please join me in welcoming back to campus John Lobon. Good evening. Fifty years ago, I became a student athlete at Syracuse University. Forty-eight years ago, seven other black football players and I chose to sacrifice our careers to impact change within the athletic department. Fairness and diversity would be our call to action, which included the following. Academic support for all athletes, professional medical treatment, fairness for, for athletes participating in sports, and finally, Diversified coaching staff. 
courage would be required to proceed with our demands. Courage is needed in, to face other challenges as well. This year's honoree had a vision of playing in the Olympics until being sidelined by a rare autoimmune disease. This is her story. You got cleared? Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I was like so strong. I I always thought about okay, like what if hockey? Like I, I did get a concussion or whatnot, and I can't play hockey ever again. But you know, then when that was taken away from me, it was just, that was a tough thing to think about. Like I'm not Lindsay the hockey player anymore. But I, over time, I came to realize that like I'm not just a hockey player. I'm a lot more than that. Today, I believe Syracuse University has accomplished those above stated goals. But remember, fairness and diversity will always be a work in process. Those individuals who are necessary to create an environment where everyone has the opportunity to overcome the challenges the life and sports provide. In 2015, David Mark authored a book, excuse me, a factual book about those events in 1970. The title is Leveling the playing field, the story of the Syracuse Eight. Representing the Syracuse Eight, we are proud to present that book in the Syracuse Eight Courage Award to Lindsley Eastwood from the ice hockey team.
You guys, you saw Lindsay at the start of the night as our first student presenter, and I'll bet you didn't know her story, most of you. And unfortunately, the audio didn't work there, Lindsay, and I know you've told the story and told it eloquently, but I thought maybe we'd get the, the quick version here of, of what it was like. We saw your Team Canada Olympic hockey jersey. What is a bigger deal than being in the Olympics for Team Canada, and what was it like to have that taken away from you? Yeah, so long story short, um, I was heading into my freshman year to come here uh, two weeks before and I got diagnosed with blood clots in my lungs. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. I saw four doctors before they figured it out and finally they, they figured out what was wrong and I was put on blood thinners. And obviously hockey's a contact sport so it can be pretty dangerous to be on blood thinners, get internal bleeding or bleed out. Um, so I was sidelined for what I thought was going to be three months, uh, just to clear up my blood clots and take care of all that. Uh, I still came to campus, uh, I was a about a week late, but girls welcomed me, and um, I just sat on the sidelines for three months, and then I got my blood test back uh, in November, and I went home to see, make, see if everything was all checked out and I was good to go get off blood thinners and play hockey again, uh, and it actually turned out that I had developed this rare autoimmune condition um, where my blood clots easier. So my doctor didn't feel comfortable taking me off blood thinners uh, and he said it was likely for the rest of my life. So instantly I thought, like, hockey, hockey's over. That was the first thing in my head, like, I'm never playing hockey again. And, and as I was sitting there, I was thinking, okay, well, I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to not be an athlete anymore. Like, I, 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 what sport can I do? What's a non-contact sport? Um, much later, my dad looked into rowing, and uh, I got into that, and, <laughs> and I contacted the rowing coaches um, here at Syracuse, and they, they let me come in and train with them and, and learn how to, how to row on the erg and all that, and the girls welcome, welcomed me, which I'm forever thankful for that opportunity. And uh, every three months, I continued to get my blood test to see if anything changed and if everything cleared up. And, uh, I went home that summer, got my blood test, wasn't totally was thinking like, oh, it's gonna be the same, like it's less than a 2% chance that it will go back to normal. But I still got the test and it actually came back that it reversed itself. And it was, it was, it was a miracle to say the least. Uh, it was one of the best days of my life. But, and uh, so that was right at the end of summer. So once again, I'm in that pickle of coming back to school and getting amped up to play hockey again. And, uh, I just really like, it's truly an honor to get this Courage Aid Award, and I'm forever thankful for it, and I'd like to, I'd like to thank the Syracuse Athletics for this amazing last three years. It's been nothing good to me. Thank the rowing coaches um, and my coaches for sticking by me through my journey and believing in my comeback. Um, you know, I learned a lot that year, and I could never have done it without my teammates, the boys, and, and my parents, of course, so thank you very much. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, John. Welcome back. That's a true warrior, one of many here, and uh, we love telling your stories. Now, the CUSE Award winners for the winter sports. Tiana Mugakahia, women's basketball. First team all ACC after a record breaking debut season. Set the school and league records while leading the country in assists. Also led the Orange in scoring. Tyus Battle, men's basketball. Named second team all ACC after leading the country in minutes played. Scored more than 19 points a game, the most since Hakeem Warwick in 2005. Ice hockey, Stephanie Grossi. All league in the CHA for the third consecutive season and won the league honor as best defensive forward. Finishes her career as the Orange all time leading scorer. Leah Bruno, cheer. A four-year veteran and tri-captain, competed at the 2015 and 2016 UCA College National Championships. Haley New, dance. A four-year veteran and senior captain.
She helped choreograph many team performances and community appearances throughout her career. Tegan Peacock, mascot, a co-captain as Otto the Orange, helped organize more than 600 auto appearances this year. Khadijah Sellers, women's track, second team all ACC both last spring outdoors and this winter indoors in the 400 meters after most recently taking sixth place at the ACC Indoor Championships. Angelo Goss, men's track. The top qualifier in the 60 meter hurdles at the ACC Indoor Championship earned second team All-American honors with a 16th place finish at the NCAA Championship. The Winter Sport QS Award winners. And now to present our performance of the year awards from the track team Tia Thevenin and Shia Trigg. treated to some amazing performances. We not only saw athletes make their own personal bests, but we also saw some school records. We had a pitcher throw a perfect game, a tennis player beat number one, and we had a runner prove he is number one. So let's meet the finalists for male performance of the year. Irvin Phillips, football. Set an ACC record with 17 catches at NC State for a career-high 188 yards. Henrik Hilpert, soccer, made a career-high nine saves and shut out number one Wake Forest in a nil-nil draw. Justin Knight, cross country, won his first career individual national championship at Syracuse's first individual cross country title. Tyus Battle, basketball, scored a career-high 37 points and played all 50 minutes in the Orange's double overtime loss at Florida State. Justin Knight, track, won his second career individual national championship and Syracuse's second track title in the indoor 5,000 meters. Dom Madonna, lacrosse, named National Player of the Week after making 13 saves and allowing just six goals and a 10-6 win over sixth-ranked Notre Dame. So, the, the Q's, Q's Awards for Men's Performance, performance of the Year goes to our very own Justin, Justin Knight. Knight. Unfortunately, Justin is unavailable to be with us tonight as he is giving his best at the Peyton Jordan Invitational in Stanford right now. So we're happy to accept this award on his behalf while he's showing the pro athletes he'll be in the mix for years to come. And speaking of how giving Justin is, um, when I first met him a few years ago back in 2013, I mentioned to him that I liked the socks he had on. So post run, Justin takes off the socks and gives them to me. So if anyone wants Justin Knight's socks, um, I have them still unwashed somewhere. <laughs> um, and Justin's a great guy, uh, very giving, and he will be sure to give us some more of his best as he closes out his final season as an Orange Man. Now, let's check out the finalists for Female Performance of the Year. Santita Abangwase, volleyball delivered a school record 783 hitting percentage in a four set win at Dartmouth. Paige Stoner, cross country, became the first Syracuse woman to finish in the top 20 at the NCAA championships, taking 17. Tiana Mungakahia, basketball, dropped 44 points on Georgia Tech in an 88-77 win, the second most male or female scored in Carrier Dome history. Miranda Drummond, basketball, led the Orange to a 76-69 upset of 11th ranked Florida State with a career high 38 points, including a school record eight threes. 
Alexa Romero, softball, through the second perfect game in program history in an 8-0 shutout of Sacramento State. Brooke Avery, ice hockey. Her first career hat trick included the game-winning goal in a 5-1 win over RIT in the CHA quarterfinals. Asa Goldstock, lacrosse, stopped 14 shots in Syracuse's 17-15 win over third-ranked Florida, including five Gators free positions in the second half. Gabriela Knudsen, tennis, paired with Miranda Ramirez to knock off the number one doubles team in the country, then won number one singles in the Orange's upset of third-ranked Georgia Tech. And the auto for Women's Performance of the Year goes to Gabriella Knutson. Gabby's the first tennis player to take home Performance of the Year. She's also nominated for Female Athlete of the Year later tonight. this award. Um, unfortunately, Justin can't be here, which is sad. I would like to share this with him. Um, of course, I couldn't have done that without my amazing doubles partner, Miranda Ramirez, and my amazing team, which, you know, took all of the other points, and I just finished it at the end, so thank you very much for them, and for my coaches for helping us the entire way. Thank you very much. And now let's check out our fourth nominee for Game of the Year. Tennis. The Arch picked up the biggest win in program history, upsetting number three Georgia Tech. Gabriela Knudsen and Miranda Ramirez combined to knock off the number one doubles pair in the country. Then Knudsen sealed the match, coming from a set down to win number one singles. Okay, still about half of those Game of the Year nominees still to come. We'll pay that off here at the very end of the night. Now I'd like to introduce a, a number of people that are most invested in your academic success and in tune with your hard work that you've put in in the classroom. The results certainly have been there. Please join me in welcoming our faculty representative to the NCAA, Rick Burton, and Assistant Provost for Student Athlete Academic Development, Tommy Powell. Hey, it's great to be back for another year of unprecedented performance in the classroom. Uh, I have to put on my glasses to read the rest of this. More of you were named to ACC honor roll than in any other year previously. And in the last year, you guys achieved the highest rate, both for our graduation rate and our highest academic progress rate. Tommy, a great year. Yes, and uh, we'd like to recognize this year's team scholars. It'll be those student athletes who have earned top grade point averages on their respective teams. So as I call your name, if you would please stand in the audience, if you would just try to hold your applause until we uh, call all names. We'll start with men's uh, basketball, Braden Bear. <laughs> Women's basketball, Isis Young. From the cheer squad, Chris Komochi. Men's cross country and track, track Colin Binney. Women's cross country and track, Madeline Davidson. From the dance team, Elena Titarundo. Field hockey, Laura Herf. Football, Rex Culpepper. Ice hockey, Addison Cohen. And from the mascots, Timothy Haltman. I'm going to pick up a couple here from men's lacrosse, Nick Martin. Women's lacrosse, Lila Nazarian. Right on. Men's rowing, Patrick Schober. Men's soccer, Hendrick Hilpert. Women's soccer, Opal Cutlass, Curlis. Softball, Bailey Douglas. Tennis, Gabrielle Knudsen. And volleyball, Bell Sand. How about a great round of applause for all of those athletes?
Great job. We're so proud of you. Uh, at this time, I'd love to welcome, and we, if we can show a great cues round of applause and welcome. This is our Vice Chancellor and Provost Michelle Wheatley's first CUSE Awards presentation. Let's, let's welcome Michelle Wheatley. Thank you, Tommy and Rick, and good evening, everyone. I am delighted to be here tonight to join in recognizing and celebrating the academic and athletic accomplishments of our student athletes. I'm here to present the CUSE Scholar Awards for top male and top female student athletes, and then the top team awards. But before I do that, I want to say a few words about why these awards are so important to me. I'm sure all of us here have heard time and again about the competing tensions that can develop between athletics and academics, and what exactly we mean by the phrase student athletes. Well, this award program illustrates exactly what we mean. We're talking about incredibly talented young people who excel at hard work and believe in giving their best, whether on the playing fields or courts or in the classroom. All of you student athletes know better than I about the challenges of balancing the competing demands of academics and athletics. And we are here this evening because you clearly are very good at it. 64% of our student athletes were above a 3.0 following the fall 2017 semester. That's 10 percentage points higher than four years ago. Give yourselves a round of applause. And the overall cumulative GPA for all student athletes is 3.1. The student athletes we recognize this evening represent the best kind of qualities, qualities such as diligence, passion, discipline, commitment, and intellectual stamina. Those are qualities that have served you well in your sport and in your academics, and they will serve you well long after you leave Syracuse. You have done very well and I know you will go on to even greater things. Congratulations to the team scholars that Rick and Tommy just named. And now, from within that impressive group, I would like to honor this year's Q Scholars, representatives of the highest GPAs for a female and a male student athlete. They both happen to be 4.0 students. They are Madeline Davison from Cross Country and Hendrik Hilpert from Soccer. Good evening, good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for this great honor. Being a student athlete at Syracuse University is a great privilege because we don't have to choose between either being a good student or a good athlete. We can do both, and we can succeed in both areas, and there are so many individuals in this room who prove every single day with their accomplishments and with their behavior that this is true. Thank you very, very much to the Syracuse Athletics Department for allowing us to be students and athletes at the same time. Thank you very much to the coaching staff of the Syracuse men's soccer team. And finally, thank you very much to my teammates for being great, great uh, role models every single day. Thank you. I just want to say, um Thanks so much to my teammates. You guys are awesome. Like, <laughs> and um, thank you to my coaches and um, my parents and everybody who is always helping me and cheering me on. I really appreciate you all.
Next is the Team GPA Award. This again was a tough race. In fact, we had three teams whose averages were at above 3.4. That is really great. And so it is my pleasure to announce that the CUSE Award for Best Team GPA goes to Women's Soccer. You wanna know? Just pour another drink with me. Come on, pour a little more. I treat you like a real lady. I keep you at the cold. I did. Thank you. Hi. Um. Thank you for this honor. Um. Of course, that we love to be student athletes, and we love putting our work into school and stuff like that. And it's amazing that we're able to represent um, such a prestigious award as doing well in academics as well as athletics. Um. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you for the coaching staff and for the team putting work in all the time, and we appreciate it. Thanks. Great job, everybody. That's two 4.0s in, in a row for Henrik Hilpert. Does this make us sick? Bringing a, bringing a new definition to clean sheets. Uh, nobody's going to mind if he makes us in an A- minus once in a while, but Outstanding work. Shout out to uh, Ariana Lee as well. She was our uh, top GPA winner in women's rowing. It's a large contingent of the you know, big demographic here. We don't want to miss them on the ratings. So congratulations, Ariana, and to the uh, rowing team, which does a great job, uh, obviously, in the classroom as well. And we'll move right along with rowers. We've got uh, a little rowing portion of the program. Next up to make our play of the year presentation, from the water, Sarah Kodoshevsky and Meg Varko. Sarah? <laughs> Woo! What was that about? Oh, Meg, I've always wanted to do that. And since we're always on the water, I've never even had the chance. You know, next time we should bring that Gatorade water bottle. Here are your nominees for Play of the Year. Hugo Del Hamel, men's oh, soccer. Oh, the wicked shot that goes in, and it's 1 0 Syracuse. Eric Dungy and Dante Strickland. Football. Screen pass here, he'll get one. And he stays alive, and he's got room to the 10. One man to beat, he'll do it. Touchdown, Syracuse. Lee Slaughterway. Field hockey. Another shot for Syracuse, another save by Gilchrist. She's been very busy, but there's Lee's Lockaway, finds the back of the net, opens up the scoring. Syracuse on the board. Savannah Rennie, ice hockey. Her breakaway backhand beat Penn State in overtime. Nicole Levy, women's lacrosse. Levy over her shoulder. How about that one from Nicole Levy? Tiana Mugakahia. Women's basketball. Gets it back. This for three in the lead. She's got it. Don Madonna and Ryan Simmons. Men's lacrosse. Line drive ahead. What a pass. What a catch in traffic. The shot. And Ryan Simmons wins Woo! it. Don Madonna, the goalie, just assisted on a triple overtime game winning goal. Tyus Battle. Men's basketball. Under a minute to play. That, the penetration. Step back. My goodness, using his size, the release just a little bit. A pressure bucket for Tyus Battle. Alicia Hansen, softball. This one is hammered to left center field, and what a great running catch out there by Hansen, and that's going to be a double play. Unbelievable grab by Alicia. <laughs> and the winner of Play of the Year is Don Madonna. And to Ryan Simmons. To Ryan Simmons. Nice. 
Dobbs pass to Ryan won the first game in triple overtime for the Orange that took place in the last 20 seasons. Um, pretty cool play, it happened pretty quickly. Um, all the credit pretty much goes to Dom, I just did the easy part, so uh, thanks guys, appreciate it. Thank you. Very good guys, and if anybody would like a mini auto, you can come help yourself at the end of the show. Otto's family is a little disappointed to see those strewn all over the place. Um, let's go back to back here and get caught up in our last, uh, most recent couple of Game of the Year nominees, including another representation of women's rowing. Women's lacrosse. Tied at nine early in the second half with number three Florida, the Orange reeled off seven straight goals. Nicole Levy's four strikes led Syracuse on offense, and Asa Goldstock's 14th save slammed the door late in a 17-15 orange win. Women's rowing. Last spring at the ACC Championships, the Orange won the second varsity eight race, with that boat being named 2017 ACC Crew of the Year. Syracuse finished a program best runner-up to Virginia for the second consecutive season. Good stuff, good luck to those teams with still, I think, two more nominees for our Game of the Year. And next up is what we call the Soliday Awards, which are in honor of Doris Soliday, a longtime Syracuse Athletics staffer that saw to the growth of the department in so many ways, particularly for the Olympic sports. And to present the Soliday Award this year, we brought back a winner from a year ago. This is a category where just to be selected on your team, it's not automatic that every team even has a nominee. You must be a senior. There's a lot of other category, characteristics that go into it. But just to be on this list that you're about to see here is an honor in and of itself, let alone to win uh, one male and one female award. Our presenter is a football legacy. He's got a familiar name in our community, and he overcame uh, the one questionable decision he's made in his life is that he started his college career at Georgetown. Smart guy, had lots of choices, went to Georgetown, and uh, has come to Syracuse. He's seen the light. He was a Remembrance Scholar, which is one of the top honors that any uh, student, let alone student athlete, can receive on our campus. He was a uh, dual major undergrad. He currently is finishing up a two-year grad degree program. Please welcome Cam McPherson. One of the most fulfilling moments of my time at Syracuse came last year on this stage when I was named a winner of the Soliday Award. While the exceptional athletes honored here today will tell you that their achievements and service are not done for recognition, it is humbling to be honored with an award named for one of Syracuse's most beloved and passionate trailblazers. The capacity for excellence that this award celebrates, demonstrated on the field, in the classroom, and through service to the community, ensures that these nominees will not only find success in future endeavors, but will use their talents to make this world a better place. These athletes represent the best of Syracuse University, and it is my honor to welcome two into the community of Soliday Award winners tonight. At this time, I'd like to present the individual team nominees for the Soliday Award. Colin Benny, Cross Country. <laughs> Courtney Brosnan, Soccer. Rachel Caldwell, rowing. <laughs> Pat Castle, soccer. Danielle Delgado, track. Sammy Fernandez, softball. Zaire Franklin, the newest member of the Indianapolis Colts, football. 
Taylor Gate, lacrosse. <laughs> Stephanie Grassi, ice hockey. <laughs> Laura Herf, field hockey. <laughs> Matt Lane, lacrosse. <laughs> Michael Lear, mascot. <laughs> Dana Lucier, cheer. <laughs> Nicole Mitchell, tennis. <laughs> Belle Sand, volleyball. Dominic Santoro, rowing. The 2018 Soliday Award winners are Stephanie Grassi and Colin Benny. up here and nominated with these uh, fine athletes in front of you guys tonight. Uh, I want to thank my teammates. It's been an unbelievable four years and I'm not going to forget any of these memories. First sauce over there in New Jersey. Um, my coaches for giving me a chance to play here. I'm believing in me since day one. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And Syracuse Athletics. Thank you guys for providing us with the skills we need to perform on the field or ice and the skills we need to perform uh, in life. And Corey Parker, I see you right there. So shout out to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, like Steph said, thanks so much to everyone who really prepared us for the future and just uh, you know, moving on from being athletes here. It's an honor to be up on this stage with all these people. They're all great athletes, great people, and you know, this is, will absolutely be one of my best memories from Syracuse. And Coach Fox, I know you don't like coming up here, but thanks so much for everything you've done these last five years. Thanks. And now look at our seventh nominee for Game of the Year. Men's Cross Country. The Orange won their sixth consecutive conference title, including five straight in the ACC, in their most dominant fashion ever. Led by champion Justin Knight, Syracuse put five in the top nine and would have beaten the combined best total of every other school in the ACC. I know it uh, felt like a long time coming, particularly with the winter we had and the late start to spring, but it is indeed getting close to the end for you seniors. All of those commitments, the practices, the classes, the games, the travel, et cetera, it's about to run out. You'll be talking about those memories for many, many years to come. Soon you'll be celebrating your graduation with your families in town and heading into the real world, wherever that may take you. Now to uh, make a special tribute to our senior class, here are two of your own. Again, rowers, Olivia Humphrey and Haley Jones. <laughs> well, Haley, can you believe it? This is our last Q Swords after four years. I know, it's hard to think that we have gone through this program for four years now and it's all really come down to this. So I guess for all of you other seniors out there celebrating your final Q Swords, this one's for you. <laughs> she'll do me, she'll do you, and got a good loving. Lord, I know you love it when she calls me sweet day. Yeah, yeah. Haley, Haley, no. This is not a Walmart, nor is this the time for yodeling. Oh, uh, you're right, I forgot. That's next weekend. Anyways, <laughs> seniors, this one's for you. I walked across an empty land I knew the pathway like the back of my hand I felt the earth beneath my feet Sat by the river and it made me complete Oh simple thing, where have you gone? I'm getting old and I need something to rely on So tell me when 
you're gonna let me in I'm getting tired and I need somewhere to begin And if you have a minute, why don't we go And talk about it somewhere only we know And this could be the end of everything So why don't we go somewhere only we know Somewhere only we know Somewhere only we know <laughs> Slow down you crazy child you're so ambitious for a juvenile but then if you're so strong then tell me why are you still so afraid Ooh. where's the fire what's the hurry about you better cool it off before you burn it out you've got so much to do but only so many hours in a day and you know when the truth is told that you can get what you want or you can just get old you've gotta kick off before you even get halfway through when will you realize the end awaits for you Slow down, you crazy child Take your phone off the hook and disappear for a while It's alright, you can't afford to miss a day or two Why don't you realize Vienna waits for you Blackbird singing in the dead of night And take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life You were only waiting for this moment to arrive Blackbird singing in the dead of night and take these sunken eyes and learn to see all your life. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird, fly. Blackbird, fly. To the light of the dark black night. <laughs> black bird fly somewhere only we know. Vienna waits for you. Congrats to all you seniors out there. Olivia Humphrey, Haley Jones, and all of the 2018 seniors. And now a look at our eighth and final nominee for Game of the Year. Field hockey. After surrendering an early goal in Durham, Jen Blakeney tied it in the first half, and Laura Herf scored the game winner in the final seven minutes for a come from behind 2-1 win at number two, Duke.
And here's our last big group of team award winners. It's the Coos Awards for the spring sports. Riley Donahue, women's lacrosse. A second team All-American as a junior, this season leads the Orange in assists. And set to finish her career top 10 all time in points, goals, and assists. Dom Madonna, men's lacrosse. The Orange starting goalie named National Player of the Week after his 13 save effort against Notre Dame. Also shockingly assisted on the game winning triple overtime goal against Army. Ashley Johnson, women's rowing. Captain and member of the Varsity 8 leads the team with a passion for the sport while embodying all the Syracuse women's rowing standards. Sam Busco, men's rowing. The Orange captain sits in the bow of the Varsity 8, a top 15 boat in the country. Voted by his team as someone who best represents what it means to be a Syracuse oarsman. Bryce Holmgren, softball. The outfielder leads the ACC in both batting average and on base percentage, while also leading the Orange in hits, doubles, walks, slugging percentage, and RBIs. Gabriella Knudsen, tennis. Ranked as high as fourth in the country, the best individual ranking in school history. Twice named ACC Player of the Week and lost just one match at home this year. The Spring Sport Cuse Award winners. And now let's welcome from the women's basketball team, Isis Young. Um, I can speak for a lot of us when I say that we couldn't achieve what we do without the help of a number of talented professionals who put in long hours so we can perform our best. All of us athletes build close relationships with coaches and trainers that we work with. So for women's basketball, that's Ryan Kabilis and Karen McKinney. So I set out to get to know some of the support staff better located in Manly Fieldhouse. Can you explain to me your role as an athletic trainer? Um, my role is the go-between between the doctor's office, the strength and conditioning, academics, the student athlete, uh, we're the middle person to help get them where they need to go when, when they have an injury, when they have an illness, anything that's going on, try to help them get where they, what they need when they need it. Strength and conditioning is a, a key role in someone's prehab, so before they get injured, before they go on the field, and then after they're injured, getting them back out. So they're step, we're all stepping stones in taking care of being on the field or on the, on the court. So I try to keep the line of communication going the entire time so that they feel comfortable coming to me and know that I care and that I'm listening to them when they're injured and have things that they're worried about. With Women's Lacrosse, we even have team rituals that we just go through. So it's, it makes it fun. and. A part, I feel a part of the team. What is the favorite part of your job? Uh, my favorite part is I'm not very athletic and most people know that. They think that you know I'm around all these sports and I must be good at something and I'm not. <laughs> so I love being able to see people achieve in athletics and even more importantly I like seeing them achieve on and off the field. So the role of a strength conditioning coach is you have to kind of be a psychologist you have to be part athletic trainer to have work with them. Uh, you have to really be the athlete's confidant so they believe in what you're doing is going to help them. Some people, just about the sight of me, if you can believe it, get really fired up and get really nervous about the work that they're going to do. Um, and some people have a great excited response. The relationship between sports medicine and strength conditioning is an interesting one. Um, it's funny because I ended up marrying an athletic trainer. Um, so the funny joke was that I would hurt him and she would fix him. In actuality, 
it's got to be a great relationship between the two because if you have any lag in communication, the athletes are the people that are going to suffer. My favorite part of my job, other than making athletes incredibly uncomfortable, um, is really the relationships that you build with each player and that you be able to see the progress that they have from the time they walk in as freshmen to the time they leave as hopefully polished graduates. Together, Kat and Corey have helped Syracuse greats achieve success at the highest levels of competition, such as quarterback Donovan McNabb, USA field hockey Olympian Alyssa Manley, and, and former lacrosse star Katie Rowan, just to name a few. So on behalf of all Syracuse athletes, we thank you for all that you do. Give me a hand. Now to present the Q's Award for Game of the Year, please welcome the newest member of the Orange Club, Jenna Rogers, and Director of Strength and Conditioning for Olympic Sports, Veronica Tierney. Uh, the elusive Corey Parker, so nice to see videos of him. For being six foot 100, he's sometimes really hard to pin down in Manly, so that's nice to actually see him on video. <laughs> but uh, there's one thing you guys don't know. Um, the morning that they taped that video, Corey was in front of the mirror for literally hours. Like, <laughs> hours. <laughs> v, I think the mirrors in the cage are there just for Corey. Pretty much. Well, and muscles. <laughs> true, true, muscles does like his, uh, his mirrors, but... Uh, <laughs> I think you and me could definitely take on Corey and Muscles any day in anything. Yeah. <laughs> we'll even give him Coach Hicks just for a little courtesy. <laughs> Let's revisit the nominees for Game of the Year. Women's rowing at the ACC Championship. Field hockey at Duke. Football versus Clemson. Men's Cross Country at the ACC Championship. Women's Lacrosse versus Florida. Men's Basketball versus Michigan State. Men's Lacrosse at Duke. And Tennis versus Georgia Tech. And the CUSE Award for the Game of the Year goes to football. This is football's third win all time for Game of the Year, most recently joining the 2010 Pinstripe Bowl. Accepting the award, the three time captain and recent draftee, Zaire Franklin. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, uh, I just want to thank our coach and staff, uh, Coach Babers, for. Um, um, help uh, leading us to victory, such a great victory. I didn't expect to win. It was a lot of great performances, especially the win over Georgia Tech. That was crazy. Uh, um, so, you know, uh, couldn't do it without a team effort. Uh, all the guys um, bought in and sold out for the victory. And uh, again, thank you to Syracuse Athletics and to all you guys uh, for the award. Thank you. And now to present our biggest awards of the night, athletes and teams of the year. Joined by voice of the orange, Matt Park. Once again, director of athletics, John Wildhead. All right, John, lots of hardware there. And we're down to the final four here, guys. We've got men's and women's athlete of the year and men's and women's team of the year. And uh, tough competition here, John, when last year's Male Athlete of the Year winner, Justin Knight, went out and won two national championships himself this year. Yeah, I'd say that's, that's, pretty, uh, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's a pretty good year, Matt. And he's still running for more, too. <laughs> all right, so let's dispense with all the drama on that one. 
This Hold will, your breath, everybody. This will come as such a surprise that the male athlete of the year and he is one of the great all-time athletes ever uh, to compete at Syracuse University's Justin Knight. Now, Justin can't be here tonight because he's in California. He's running in a world-class race later this week against uh, mostly professional competition. That's the level he's at. Uh, but before he headed west, he recorded this message. Hey guys, uh, it's a pleasure to win another performance of the year at the Keys Awards. Um, unfortunately, I'm all the way out here in uh, California. Hopefully the weather's nice in Syracuse by now. Um, it means so much to win again, and you know, I want to say thank you for, to my coaches and my teammates for helping me accomplish this goal. Thank you, guys. We wish Justin the best. Uh, ran into Justin a couple times over the weekend, and uh, he said he just had spent his pre-race time relaxing watching the Express. He's like too QC to believe, Justin. So very impressive, and we hope uh, we see him in the Olympics someday. All right, we John. Will. Uh, we will. Wider race here on uh, Female Athlete of the Year. Yeah, just a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous group of nominees. Um, some unbelievable individual performances in. You could literally, you know, you could divide this up five, six ways, and uh, people are so deserving. All right, let's meet the nominees for Female Athlete of the Year. Tia Thevenin, track. Honorable mention All-American last spring after qualifying for the NCAA Outdoor Championships in the 100-meter hurdles. Lee Slaherway, field hockey, an All-American for the second straight year, named second team this fall after anchoring the Orange defense. Paige Stoner, cross country and track, an All-American in the 3,000-meter steeplechase last spring. This fall, Paige won the first women's ACC cross country championship in program history. Stephanie Grossi, ice hockey, second team All-CHA this season, finished her career as Syracuse's all-time leading scorer with 117 points. Tiana Mungakahia, basketball, voted first team All-ACC after leading the country in assists and setting both the program and conference single season record. Gabriella Knudsen, tennis, ranked as high as fourth in the country, the best individual ranking in program history. Alexa Romero, softball, Tossed three no-hitters, including the second perfect game in program history. Top 10 in the country in strikeouts. Riley Donahue, lacrosse, will finish her career top 10 in program history in points. Currently leads the Orange in assists. What, uh, what a group. Before I announce the, who the winner is, can we have a round of applause again for all the nominees? All are incredibly deserving. But the winner, Female Athlete of the Year, Gabriella Knudsen. Abby's the first tennis player to win Athlete of the Year and picks up her third auto of the night. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, I wish I could be gone like Justin because he got to pre-record this and I have to talk right now. Um, but thank you so much. I wanted to win this since I got here at the Fierce Cuse Awards um, two years ago and it's such an honor. I know we've all, we're all amazing. I'm so proud of all of us female student athletes and I just, I'm really happy to be here with all of you tonight. So thank you so much. Congrats to Gabby, who's the highest ranked uh, women's tennis player we've ever had here at Syracuse. And congrats to the entire team who's made the NCAA tournament for just the second time. They will uh, head south to compete here in another week or so. Okay, so now the uh, team awards John, and let's meet the nominees for men's team of the year. Rowing, the first varsity eight placed eighth at last spring's IRA championship. In this spring, the Orange won the Stag Trophy for the first time in seven years. Cross Country, 
won their fifth straight ACC championship and sixth consecutive conference title before Justin Knight broke through and won the program's first individual national championship. Basketball, after being the last at-large team selected into the NCAA tournament, made its 39th appearance a memorable one with three wins in five days and a trip to the Sweet 16. Track, placed 10th at the NCAA Indoor Championships on the strength of Justin Knight's 5,000 meter title and a runner-up finish in the 3,000 meters. Lacrosse, swept through the ACC regular season undefeated and have not lost a regular season conference game in more than two years. Again, all deserving nominees uh, in the winner. And this team, uh, this team proved all the critics and all the experts wrong once they were selected to the tournament men's basketball. Men's basketball wins the Q's award for team of the year for the third time, most recently joining the 2013 Final Four season. Accepting the award, Tyus Battle. Um, well, first off, I'd like to thank you guys uh, and the fans just for uh, constantly filling the, the dome and uh, just supporting us the entire year. Uh, I'd like to thank our coaching staff. They did a great job the entire year. And uh, these guys, I mean, before the season even started, God, people count, count us out. Uh, but they play with so much heart, uh, and they fall every time we step on the floor. And uh, we surprise a lot of people. So uh, thank you again. Yeah, come on over this way, guys. Thank you, Tyus, and congratulations. Male Athlete of the Year is wide open next year, Tyus, just saying. <laughs> we know the voters. Okay. And last but certainly not least, let's meet the nominees for our Women's Team of the Year. Rowing. Claimed a 13th place finish at last spring's NCAA championship, and the second varsity eight was named ACC Crew of the Year. Cross Country, led by Paige Stoner's win at the ACC championships, returned to the NCAA championship for the first time since 2015. Field Hockey reached the NCAA tournament for the 10th straight season after knocking off seven ranked teams this fall. Track. Paige Stoner and Tia Thevenin were All-Americans outdoors last spring. This winter, the team finished ninth at the ACC Indoor Championships, with Stoner making first team All-American at 5,000 meters. Basketball, after graduating four starters and 84% of the offense, still reached the NCAA tournament for the sixth consecutive year. Tennis, ranked in the top 25 for the second time in program history, and earlier today was selected for their second ever appearance in the NCAA tournament. And the winner is, in this program, uh, they made history this year, women's tennis. This is Tennis' first win for Team of the Year. They'll head south next week to take on Wichita State, the first round of the NCAA tournament, and a match played at Ole Miss. We'd like to really thank like the coaching staff. They, we set out on a goal this season um, to make the NCAAs again, and we are really excited for going out um, next week and competing there. Um, we have a great team. Everyone's such fighters, so much heart on our team. Um, and yeah, thank you.
John, job well done, and uh, the job's not done for some of these teams still competing in the spring. No, we still have a lot to, uh, to play for this spring, and again, I want to end the way I started, is I want to thank our student athletes, because I think tonight we got just an amazing summation of, of the great work that you've done over the past year, uh, academically and athletically, and you are unbelievable representatives of our university, our department, our community, and we're extraordinarily proud and speaking on all the on behalf of the entire administration. You know, we are uh, we're honored to uh, to work uh, to work on your behalf and to work with you. You make us very very proud. Congratulations. Awesome. Hope you had fun tonight, everybody. Enjoy the uh, strong finish to the semester. We wish you the best of luck in future endeavors. Thanks to everybody here, including our production staff and the folks at Shine that put together the evening tonight. Go Orange. We'll see you next year.